Just the tips, round number 16 in the NRL. Mitch, Buzz, Nick here with you. Good day. Hello, Hello. gentlemen. Uh, awful week for me last week, I think, on the tips. Oh, let's go through what we had. I think oh. I got, maybe, was it, uh, let me have a look. I tipped the Sharks. Dolphins beat them oh. by two points. Tipped the Raiders. The Cowboys smashed them. I believe I famously said in that podcast last week, Cowboys let me down last week. I'm absolutely not tipping them in the cool conditions in Canberra, and they came back. I think I said the beat. opposite. I, th- I, said, I think I think they're, I got six out of eight. So oh, the right. ones I missed, obviously, was the Titans, and I tipped the Sharks as well. I was none from four. Lost the Broncos and lost the Titans against mm-hmm. the Tigers, which was really a flip of the coin that game. I was none from four. Ended up finishing with four. I just knew I was off to a shocker straight away. As <laughs> soon as the Sharks went down, I thought seeing Hammer run the length of the field went, yeah, it's going to be a I was one on the game as well. Yeah, I was happy about that. Like, I was actually happy the Dolphins won. I was going for the Dolphins, but I had tipped the Sharks. I didn't think they... I will say, anyway. Trell Mitt dominating on Saturday night mm. was... I mean, as a Blues fan, very happy to see that. Broncos yep. fan... Was exactly the thing I was scared of. Yep. Yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Um, was it a short week this week? What's yeah. How many games are there? Five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, only five. My mm. lord, we're kicking off late. Obviously, the under nineteen state of origin last night. So the first game tonight. Let's hey, talk more about that. Hey, what's uh, which one? The, the, the <laughs> origin of the future. Yeah. Can I say? Um, I don't know if anyone watched the under nineteens. Great game of footy. Mm. Like the kids are good. Yeah, I and, and the girls as well. Yeah, yeah. They, they are actually really good games. And I saw a lot of clips from the last couple of seasons, or a couple of games uh, over the last few years, where they've highlighted those stars that are now big NRL. Like they had uh, um, Tessie New yeah, passing off Walsh. to Reese yeah, Walsh yeah. from like three years ago. I didn't ago. recognize him. I know, the short I, back and sides. I know. Yeah. And I thought, God, I wish I could pay attention to the names. And that's what we were talking about. Well, on Bradman the show Best yesterday. had a runaway try yeah. similar to that, yep. I think couple of years ago as well. Yeah. So it's, know, it's actually a pretty is. decent little preview for some of yeah. our big stars of the future. You just got to remember the... Well, it was good seeing Kobe notes. Black in action. And then as a New South Wales fan, it was good to see Chevy Stewart oh, yeah. sort of playing with kids his own age. And mm. he, he played well. Uh, yeah. But bad night for the for the Queenslanders. So yeah. moving. You've, you've had a pretty on. good one. Yeah. We've, 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 we've done well, it. I mean, you've lost, right. to be fair, they've lost the last three 19 or, like, yeah. 19's origins. Yeah. It's like the next generation is actually looking really good for the, for the Blue Stars. Yeah. For sure. We need it. And a uh, big congrats to a good friend of the show, Ben Teo, uh, mm. coaching that in the yeah. for Queensland. That's so huge, yeah. Moving yeah. up in his coaching career, which is awesome. Yeah. Round uh, 16 kicks off tonight. The Melbourne Storm, they're in town. Uh, mm-hmm. Pretty strong favourites against a depleted Dolphins who, yeah, they do get the job done with uh, some of their biggest stars out. I just I just think tonight, down the hammer and a few of their other stars in Origin Camp, they're still out with a few other injuries that aren't going to be there tonight. And the Storm welcoming back the Pap. Yep. He's back in the side tonight. It's and good for 40. It is. I'm it's going for a smoky here. I'm going Dolphins. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just can't go against the Storm's record at Suncorp it's Stadium. Fair. Thing I do not lose there. That's a good point. Um, they're, But they are, like, so the other thing I was thinking, they played in New Zealand last week, mm. and they won that game. I mean, the Warriors had 11 players on the field at one stage. Yeah. Didn't look convincing. Not the worst. I don't know if they would have gone straight from New Zealand to Brisbane, or if they would have gone via mm. Melbourne, but it's two weeks on the road. Yeah, it's tough. Regardless of whether they stopped or not, I, mean, yeah. I need I need to climb the ladder, so I need to go against the grain. I think I'm I think I'm eighth in our um, Ash Lutzi and Susie O'Neill tipping comp. Are you really? That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm at so thirty eight. I, I need to go against the grain to try and climb the ladder. Mm-hmm. So I'm going Dolphins. All right. Oh, storm yeah, no, for us. Storm, yeah. yeah. All right. Tomorrow afternoon, uh, the Titans home to the Warriors. Up the Waz. Yeah, I'm going to go the Waz there. They're um, all of a sudden what three weeks ago they just. Flick the switch. I'm going yeah. Titans in number no, <laughs> <laughs> Although it could happen. I mean, Mate, anything. It... Mitch Barnett's not there for the um the Warriors. He's 18th man in mm. Origin. And I, I think the Wires as well. To be fair, I think they I think they could have won last week against Melbourne, had they not have had a couple of plays put in the bin. Well, they were going really strong at the start. And I go, oh, here's another one I'm going to lose. It would have been my fifth. But then, what, the Storm scored three tries in like 12 minutes to yep. take the lead at halftime? Yeah. Yeah. But I'll uh, I'll go the wires there. Tomorrow afternoon, the Roosters, pretty strong favourites against the Doggies. How are you feeling about it, Buzz? Um, listen, I'll, I'll say two things. Um, I'm, I won't tip against the Roosters because I, I don't, I very rarely do that. Mm. Um, however. And that's why you're right. <laughs> exactly. Um, we're playing in Gosford, my hometown. And I. I have maybe it's a curse because I go to, I got a lot of stadium curses. <laughs> Roosters don't do well in Gosford, so they, they, I think they play Manly there a couple of times. They play the Dogs there occasionally, um, Newcastle a couple of times as well. We don't often win in Gosford. Hmm. Don't know what it is. So I, I am going into this game with a bit of hesitation. Our forward pack's a bit depleted, so I would tip the Roosters. However, I wouldn't be surprised if the Doggies got a win. 
Although I'd be very happy to see Kikau out. I don't know if that's been confirmed yet, but. That'd make me feel a lot easier. And you think about the last time these these what a what a gladiatorial match that was when they met up a couple of months ago. That in the was pouring rain, ruined by a sin bin that shouldn't have been a sin bin. Mm. Good oh, to see you're still dirty about it. Oh yeah. no, you actually uh, my <laughs> be- really let go of that. One of my best mates who I had at Origin is a doggy supporter. Yeah, and it kills me every time they beat us. <laughs> kills me. How about them at the moment? I mean, they're five and six. Mm. Roosters be Bulldogs. Like I'm glad to see the Bulldogs bouncing back, but to see them in the top six. I know. This I, far into the season. I'm all aboard the dogs at the moment. Yeah. They're a good I'm, team. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been getting behind them. I reckon they get it done. Sorry, Buzz. The curse continues. That's okay. I'm not against it. I just hope it doesn't happen. I think I'll I think I'll think tip the Roosters. but uh, With zero maybe, confidence. Maybe get the ball. Uh, the nighttime game, the Rabbitohs uh, in 14th. Uh, what, back-to-back wins for the first time this season and uh, up against Manly. Both teams, I mean, missing a, missing a couple of people there for, for Origin. I Rabbitohs think, still strong favourites, though. I think the Rabbitohs do it again, to be mm. honest. Yeah. I think Terrell Med has a quiet game. Now he's got the origin call-up. Mm. Well, he's not, we won't, won't be there. He's but not yeah. playing, yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. He'll go very yeah, quiet will, will, will be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think, uh, in my opinion on this game, I think the biggest thing that the Rabbitohs have done is change their halves. Mm. Whiten and Walker with their hands on the ball, and they're obviously still part of it. They Jai Gray's back for the Rabbitohs, who looked good before he got injured. Yeah. I, and actually, I think I think Jai Gray is a better fullback for the Rabbitohs than Trell is. So, I think I think they'll do the job against Manly, who were also depleted. No Ola Kawatu, no Cherry Evans, yep. no uh, Jakey Turbo. Mm-hmm. I think the Rabbitohs. It's funny watching that halves combo finally getting put together for uh, the Bunnies because I feel like I've got a lot of friends that are big Bunny supporters, and they've been screaming about putting White in the in the halves all season. It's like, why do we buy him just to throw him into the centres? And I know yeah. they had Ilias there and there's a whole lot of drama around that, but to finally see it happen and now they're getting the results. It is interesting to see two left-footed players, two left-sided players in Cody Walker and uh, White mm. playing separate sides of the field. Yeah, That's, That was probably my only uh, reservation in if they were to make that change. Yeah. It's worked for them. It's still working for them. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get the bunnies there as well. And the uh, final game of the round, Sunday afternoon, uh, the Tigers home to the Raiders. Campbelltown. Is it back at Campbelltown? Yeah. I don't know what that, I don't know what that changes for them. I prefer them at Leichhardt, but mm. I don't know. I, th- I think the Raiders, just at this point, the way Sticky's got them moving around, he's, he's building his run to September. I agree. I think I think I think this is a sort of game I wouldn't be surprised though to see West win, mm. but I don't think they do two in a row. This is your real origin Where's... period game. Mm. Oh, yeah, Appy's back at uh, at Hooker. Do they have any Raiders? Do they have uh, Hudson Young's not named? But do they no, have any or, or, origin players? I don't think they're... either team do. Not really. No, they're the least depleted of of any of the matchups so full this squad. week. Mm. That's interesting. Mm. Raiders solid favourites. That looking at like a dollar sixty to two thirty for the West Tigers. They're so inconsistent, the Tigers, aren't they? Like, you, you don't know what you're going to get. I would have never had them winning last week, like ever in a million years. I mean, so, yeah, happy for Benji. Love, yeah. love to see what he's doing, but they're not there yet. No. Nah. They're, 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 I, th- I think every time that you get a glimmer of hope from them, I think, you go, yeah, finally their fortunes are turning around, but they're not there yet. And just, like the ti- you, you've still got to give them time. They're like the Titans. Like They have a good result, and you go, oh, this is the turnaround, and then they come back and they lose. Uh, I'll go Raiders there as well, Mitchell. Yeah, I have gone the Raiders. Eighty-six percent of the uh, of the Jeez. tippers now on the competition going for the uh, Canberra side, and that is it. Five games, nice short week. Heading mm-hmm. towards Origin next week. I mean, tips for Origin, fellas. Tip- so it's tough to take the bias hat off, but I think de- I think down in Melbourne, backs to the wall. <clears throat> New South Wales have made the right changes here. Mm. You can give uh, Queensland knowing they've got a decider coming up up the sleeve in Queensland. I think there might just be. Foot off the pedal. I, don't, I, look, I still don't like the calls that New South Wales have come out and they're going to say they're going to go after Reese Walsh again. I like it. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, you've got it. Yeah, that's thing. You've got to I say know that, it. I know they've yeah. got to. Can I say, the or, I Origin to, 1, but... we, we were down there for it. Uh, sorry, Nick. You're right. um, <laughs> It was boring. Speaking about things we've forgotten about. It was boring. Like, it was... I like the fact that there's a little bit of... Like, look, firstly, right? I don't know if anyone's seen the comments about Michael Maguire doing the glass houses thing. He's, the words he says doesn't correlate to his face. He looked so uncomfortable saying those yeah, words. Yeah, it was weird. It I, was, I've seen this in God. sports where someone, some PR team has got in their head and going, hey, you need to stoke the fires here. Yeah. And there's some people that can't deliver those messages. And that's fine that not Madge can't deliver mm. it, but it's awkward. But you know did, what? But did, I, I like that it started a little bit of like yeah. Billy Slater hating on Maguire. And yeah. I don't know if they would have been together because Michael Maguire came through the Storm mm. coaching system. I don't know if he was there he needs, when, yeah, he needs some villain when story Billy there. was there. But... It's made it a bit more interesting. Yeah, I, I miss that. 
I, mean, I still don't hate Madge or anything, but I, I love that that is there. Were you watching 360 that night, like following those comments yes. on Monday? They spoke about that for 25 minutes. And it was it was a really weird conversation. If anyone who's not a footy fan and doesn't watch football chat like this and chat shows to come in and go, are, are these like four grown men seriously <laughs> arguing over who said some naughty words? I know. I mean, like, but at the I same mean, time... First of all, that's most of that program. <laughs> yeah, so sure. They've got to fill that time out. Yeah. But uh, no, I was, I was enjoying that, especially like Gordy would sit there and just sort of like, like when Billy oh, got brought shut on. Up, Gordy, mate. <laughs> Gordon <laughs> Tallis, you guys, you guys say Gordon Tallis is a Queensland legend. He's got a worse record than Mitchell Pearce in Origin. In Origin, does he? <laughs> he's lost more games. Uh, he's, he's not, I think he's got a lesser win percentage. I think he's won five games, and Mitch Pearce won six. Really? Yep. No, mate, don't tell oh, me. There we here. go. Wow. Sorry, hitting you with facts. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not arguing. I actually didn't know that because he obviously, it was then that, that was a, that was a strong blues period where, where Gordy would have been playing the late nineties through until. It was a strong what, Queensland period when Mitch Pierce was there. It, it was indeed. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but no, I, no, I, I, I wouldn't have thought that ever. Mitch would have been selected as consistently as what Gordon would have been. Cause Gordon was the captain there for a while. I'm pretty sure Mitch played more games. I'm ninety yeah, percent wow. sure. Someone, yeah, no, well, no. You Google Google Gordon Tallis yeah. Origin games. Sorry to turn the pot this, into this. This is the tale of the tape that I never expected to see. I know. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not having no arguments. That would actually be a fascinating piece of uh, fascinating piece of trivia because who's won more Origin series, Mitchell Pearce? <laughs> well, I dare say I think Mitchell Pearce only won one without any stats. Maybe two. I'm pretty sure he was dropped for 2014 when they when they won. Um, yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Mitch played 19 yeah. Origins, uh, won six of them. Six of 19. Six yep. of 19 yep. with a win percentage of 31.58 percent. Um, should I have a look at Gordy? Yeah. Hang so on. I'm with this internet over here. Is That's all right. Terrible. I'm on 5G, mate, because I don't trust Nova's no. Gordon Tallis. No, they don't allow you get into porn Origin sites like stats. you like either. Um, <laughs> it's not he, like it used he to He played be. 20. All oh, right, he so played twenty. Um, I haven't got the win stats. Did he? Because I've 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 got I've got seventeen appearances here. Um, seventeen appearances. Oh no, you know why? Because three of them were during Super League. Oh, it doesn't count. Yeah, <laughs> five wins, twenty nine percent. I wonder whether my stats. I wonder whether he's got the medal there because, like the Queensland side, like, once you reach twenty, you get the Dick Tosser Turner medal uh, for the uh, late great. Um, Manager of the Queensland side, so uh, that would that would tip him in. Well, actually, no, hang on. Sorry, what I'm looking at says 20, and then there's another three. For so I reckon someone's fudged some stuff. If that's the case, well, I mean, I, I'm going I'm going off the very reputable yeah. uh, website of rugbyleagueproject.org. Mm. Well, there's probably a lot more sort of. <laughs> Is it dot org? They, yeah. they just want to get the information out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh... It's non profit. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I was just, what I was, he mean? I was a yes ending to you there, Buzz. Like, going, well, like Gordy there, sort of loving what Billy was saying, and everyone else loving Madge, and then there's sort of back and forth, and just sort of having people there, just arguing because it does get. We needed that, I think, after Origin One. And look, if you're if you blues media, it's it's very good. It's like let's focus on this rather mm-hmm. than what happened in game one, and then it's. Well, the Queenslanders won't like the idea. You haven't got Billy Slater. And that was even an argument. Are they having a go at him as a coach or as a player? And blah, blah. I'm like, who cares? It's, it's brought some even... theatre to it. I mean, yeah. And look, it's a five Surely. it's a five plus week cycle mm. Mm. concurrent with the NRL season that you've got to keep going. You've got to keep that media yeah. machine ticking along. So, yeah, absolutely. You've got to like inflame some stuff. You talk about the, the, the boring. Was it the lead up or just the result? Because the oh, no, the lead up. Well, yeah. I mean, to be fair, the result the was. The result kind was of... weird, man. Like, we were sitting next to each other and yeah. I have. It took me until I reckon it got to two minutes to go, and I'm like, "Oh, I actually feel good because I'm so used to feeling on edge the entirety of an origin. You can be five minutes out, and you can be up by fourteen. I'm mm. like, anything could happen at this point. And for me, I think it changed the like the the psyche of me because I was like, okay, well now Queensland are supposed to win, so mm. it didn't hurt as much. If that yeah. sounds right, but I think the lead up to it was boring. And like be- he chose yeah. a boring team. Like mm. it was, like it was just a friend. Like. Jake Turbo as a captain is just a friendly dude. Mm. I think Ash said it, who's a passionate Queensland. He's like, oh, how can you hate Jake Turbo? Yeah. Like, he's such a nice dude. Yeah. You I felt the I mean? same with Boyd Cordner a couple of years ago yeah, when, when he point. was up there, and I'm like, I, I don't hate this guy. Yeah. And as a New South Wales fan, and like very rarely will I credit Queensland, as Billy Slater is a phenomenal coach. Mm. I don't know if that would translate to NRL, but he's bloody good at origin level. Yeah. And you need to try and do something to rattle him. Mm. I don't think, I don't know if this has worked. So you reckon there's a bit of like Mourinho Guardiola going going on? Oh, here. there's mind games for I sure. Like the other thing as well, I heard in a podcast, I can't remember which one. Someone suggested that um, maybe 
it was planned to take the heat off Latrell Mitchell coming in. Mm. So Matt just kind of front footed it and going, You guys can all talk about what I've just said. Yeah. Yep. And and Latrell Mitchell, who's I'll buy is that. a walking yep. headline, mm-hmm. uh, kind of like subtly goes into the camp. And you're there's right. been a little bit of Latrell coming in, you know, under pressure environment when you're yeah. down one nil, you're right. There could have been a real narrative. There could have also been yeah. the Nico Moses narrative. Yep. You know, bringing Dylan Edwards back in. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, there's probably but it, it felt weird watching Michael McGuire try to be mean. <laughs> yeah, I know, right. It just didn't feel genuine. And I wonder whether it's got an, a, a negative effect because, you know, we were, we were talking the other day and I, I, I think the worst thing, that, or sorry, the best thing Queensland could do is not talk about Latrell Mitchell and the media could not talk about him and that he's he's this and all the bad things about him and that how he could fall away and how he's a great... Just, just go out there and either not talk about him at all or talk about how amazing he is. Yeah. Don't talk about no, anything no, else. You don't, you don't now, stir him up. Like mm. You said Madge has taken the focus. If it's... I love that theory, could take the focus off him, but then all of a sudden Queensland's not talking about him either. And it's like he was never there. There was never any like, should he have been there in game one and all this other stuff? And what are we going to do and how dangerous? No one's talking about him at all. So I wonder whether that works in his favour because he's I don't know, he's just got it in him. to If you piss him off early, he'll do something dumb. But and I'd guess, love to see him get that out of his game because yeah. I hate seeing players, regardless of whether they're on a team I support or not, you can see them there and you're like, I can see you've got so much potential to get to blah, but you just cannot get out of your own way. I think the struggle for Latrell will be defending in the centres. Mm. He'll obviously won't run as much. I think, again, I think I heard um, Jason Demetrio say um, in a podcast as well, listen to a lot of podcasts, and I'll be listening to this one, um, that Latrell injured his calf last year, I think it was, um, because he wasn't used to doing short, sharp movements, mm. getting back, defending in the centres. He's used to like long strides, and he didn't condition himself properly yeah, right. for that sort of centre training, mm. which is interesting because yeah. that's obviously going to be intensified in a game. Yeah. Um, so I think that I think that's, if I was Queensland, I'd be, I know like left edge is pretty strong for you guys. Um, I'd be almost like flicking that and going, Reese Walsh sweeping plays out to the right mm. and isolating Latrell, like mm. in 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 defence. And yeah. like to your point, you don't even have to get under his skin. If if he makes a poor defensive read mm. that leads to a try early on, I reckon his confidence is shot. Well, we're seeing him do that at fullback for the bunnies. If he like doesn't get, if he doesn't run across and he misses out on getting to the uh, to the try score in the corner, at, for the rest of the game, you'll see him be 10, 15 metres off the pace because yeah. he just doesn't look like he puts in the effort to get over there fast enough. He looks like he's jogging. You're like, you get pissed off as a Rabbitohs fan or tipping them that he's not putting in the effort there. So, yeah. I'd, not to say, as outsiders here, like you we can we can identify that. So New South Wales team outs. Oh, that, that memo's getting crossed. they got everything help, covered. Help him out in defence, but mm. what he brings in offence... I, I don't care about defense because first time, as I said in game one, we looked, we did look dangerous, and that was even mm. down with twelve men. So mm. if we actually have that flair there, then I, I, I would take the you know the minus fifty in defense there. My yeah. only worry about that is though, you guys could have been twelve nil up. You should have been twelve nil up before Sawali got sent off. Mm. Like so, Hammer should have passed inside the the actual moment that um, Reese got knocked out. Mm. Do you remember he made a break and then yeah. he tried to run himself and Teddy got him? Yeah. Whilst everything was happening in the background. Yeah. Twelve nil up. That's against thirteen players. Mm. Like, that's in seven minutes. That's yeah. story done, yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And then maybe when we went down to 12, there's a bit of complacency that sets in or it, like, galvanized the blue squad. So they're like, let's just, just try and beat them. Mm. So you I take, don't know. Like, Queensland... Take that in with a better... Me. Like you said, a better team, though, the Blues. Like, what they were doing that first 20 that's minutes. a much better of, team, yeah. Yeah. And I want to know the points because generally, I feel like the last 10 years, game two has been where the, it's a blowout in yes. points. Yep. Whether it's both teams or, like, you know, Queensland have won a four to six point margin in game one and the Blues will come out and put 40 on us in game two. But it's the same story every every origin. It's Mm. like coach picks team, team one, team one loses. Seven changes for team two, which are the players that everyone said should have been in In team one. one, But like it happened a few years ago when it was like Josh Adokar was not in the squad. I think, I can't remember who. Okay, that's right, kept him out. They didn't play. Um, There was another player who I think, uh, Jake Turbo wasn't in the squad for game one. Mm. They lost. They're like, let's bring back in the players that we should have. went over to Perth. And yeah, I, maybe. And they, maybe went, that and they year. went nuts over in Perth. Mm. It's going to be good. Yeah, and then, yeah, we'll, you, then using that game, I think Queensland will put the queue back in the rack and go, we've got game three up at home. Yeah. We'll, well, the, we'll have them figured out by then. There's 30-year difference, but the only time New South Wales has ever lost in Sydney and then had to win a neutral game and then play a decider in Brisbane 
was in 94. Stats. Miracle and, try? Yeah, miracle try. We Queensland won in Sydney. Miracle did try they game. Did that series? Game one. That we, yeah, we did. And then in both years, 93 and 94, we won game one. But game four, oh, sorry, 94 was game one in Sydney. Miracle try. We win in the, in the death. Game two was at the MCG. New South Wales won. Ah. Then came for a decider in Queensland and won. 30 years on. That's what they've got to do. They've only ever done it once before, lost at home, win a neutral game to push it to a decider in Brisbane, and have won that. They've I only ever done it once. I never knew that Queensland lost that series. Yeah. Classic Queensland to really blow up no, that series and make it all about <laughs> <them>. <laughs> I liked her because it was dad coached 93 and 94, and he won game one both years and ah. went on to lose the series. So um, I've got to host an event at Suncorp on game two night next week. And I'm like, how much of a dick do I want to be to my own father? Where I go, so Billy's obviously got to go against history. To, um, actually, strangely, you were the team that coached the team that won in Sydney <laughs> and then went on to lose. I think you got to do that 100. percent Oh, I will. And yeah. he'll. Like, <laughs> well, he be there because I know he. Um, he. I saw. I saw him in the commentary box at Triple M. He won't be. Well, he's at this event that I'm doing. It's at Suncorp Stadium. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he hasn't got the call up ah. to, to do the commentary. Yeah. Unless he pulls, unless they don't know that the people that are organising it, or he hasn't communicated that. I should. I'm working with them today in another event. Maybe I should. Yeah. Bring that up. Otherwise, they might need I, another. Dan Ganane, who d- calls those games, mm. he is very quick to shut down. Like he, I think he did it when he called the Reese Walsh mm. uh, hit. Like fantastic call. I think he's the best caller in the game. Agreed. Personally, play, yeah, play by great. play, absolutely. Um, I think across, sh- across both TV and radio, no, not many people can do both. I think he's a better caller on radio. I think I think he's looser on radio mm-hmm. than he is oh, on for TV. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like. there's, there's more of an art to calling on radio. Yeah, yeah. he's so good. Do you remember when Hadley made the jump to nine and he was still calling it like a radio announcer? Yeah. And oh, then the three quarter there, blah blah blah. And this is happening. So like, we can see that. Yeah, Just, yeah, just yeah, talk yeah. about it. Don't tell us what's happening. It's a we giant problem it. in AFL. The radio callers going over to TV. Yeah, right. And they are terrible. But yeah. anyway, sorry, I don't. Agree well, Ganane, G- G- like I think Gerds was in there. It's about to jump in and then like Ganane like shut Gerds up and was like this. Let the moment happen. Yeah, but he's different around your dad. Like oh, I, really? I love, I love watching Ganane because your, your dad will talk, and Ganane just takes a step back. Oh, really? Just, like, listens to the king. Yeah, it's, it's really impressive. Video, well, if that's the case, I don't think my old man knew what to say because I was looking at that video and he was in the corner. Obviously, Ganane in the middle, Girdler on the other side, and Dad was just sitting there, just look. Wow. <laughs> Oh, well, and I'm like, I think it was like, do I pay attention to the play? Or oh, holy crap, he just got absolutely smacked mm. in the head. Um, so that's interesting. I'll have to... This is a, now a Dan, a Dan Ganane stand podcast. Appreciation no, no, podcast. Well, yeah. I, I watch as I pivot this, and one day we'll somehow get it into their contracts if we can. But God, I'd love to see like a, just a Queenslanders only call from yourself, from uh, Ash and Lutzi. I'm pretty sure, oh, for, not from them, I'm 90% sure that... Has been the, the thing, the concept not with the boys. Now, the concept but, exists, but I want to. I want to. Yeah. I would love to hear the guys do a commentary, uh, Ash and Lutz for sure. But, uh, yeah, but that would involve them working after nine thirty a.m. Sure, Thanks sure, for sure, listening sure, to sure. the Tipping Podcast May- today. <laughs> Maybe we just put a mic on them during the game, yeah. and it's a warts and all. Uh, yeah. Yes, as of course, unofficially brought to you by Tough Man Refresh. Tough Man Refresh.